Good afternoon and welcome to our Women in the Trades Career Connections webinar. If this is your first time attending one of our Career Connections webinar, the purpose of these events is to help us connect women to educational opportunities and organizations that are currently hiring. My name is Lori Gentile and I'm the Director of Client Services for the Women's Resource Center and I'll also be your host today. As you'll notice, just a little bit of housekeeping, um, the lines are all muted um, so that we don't get any background noise. Uh, but we still do really want to hear from you. So if you have a question, please click on the Q&A box. It should be at the bottom of your screen and you can type in any questions that you might have. And then at the end of the webinar, um, I'll come back in and um, our presenters will all be available to answer any questions you might have. I also want to let you know that we're recording this webinar and it will be available along with all of the rest of our webinars on our website later this week. So before we get started, I just want to um, just give a brief overview of the Women's Resource Center in case you're not familiar with us. Um, oh, whoops, agenda first. I'll start off uh, with the overview. And then we have uh, uh, representatives from Suncoast Technical College and Career Edge. Then we have Trudy Moon, who is the owner of Air and Energy. And then we have two professionals. These are great ladies that are working and they're gonna talk about their career journeys. And then we'll wind up with uh, State College of Florida, Lee Kotwicki. Um, to talk about programs there. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. So just a little bit about the Women's Resource Center. We were founded um, first in Sarasota in 1979. And we offer programs um, at low cost or no cost to women and some men. Um, so our offerings are mental health counseling, career services, educational scholarships and programs, legal and financial consultation and education, and then wellness programs. And then we, our service, our centers have been closed since March due to COVID, but mostly all of our programs and services are offered remotely. Um, we've even started offering our yoga and meditation. So look for those coming up. We have three centers, one in Manatee, one in Sarasota, and one in Venice. Um, and the centers, although they're closed, we are open on Wednesdays um, in Sarasota and Bradenton, and clients can come in to visit our career closets, which I'll talk to you about in a little bit, or drop off clothing donations. And then in Venice, we're open on Wednesdays um, from 11 to three for clothing donations. We also have a unique boutique which sells gently used designer clothes. Um, they're on Main Street in Bradenton and they're open um, limited hours, um, Tuesdays through Fridays, but this Saturday they're gonna start opening on Saturday mornings. So I just wanna focus and zoom in a little bit about our career services since this webinar is really focused on careers. Um, uh, st our stellar program, Career Coaching, offers one-on-one -on -one career coaching and advice for people looking for work. And our career coaches are trained to help you with everything from career explorations, if you don't know what you wanna be when you grow up, through creating your resume or sharpening it up a little bit, to applying online for job opportunities, to mock interviews or practice interviews, to helping you negotiate that deal once you get one. Our career centers are closed now, but once we reopen, um, it's just a place where you can come use our, our uh, computers. We have coaches that sit in the career centers and are always there ready um, to help you with uh, tutoring, uh, learning Microsoft uh, products, and also with your job search. A lot of clients come in and, and we help them with their LinkedIn profile, for example. 
And then our career closets, this is one of the things that absolutely made me fall in love with the Women's Resource Center when I walked through the front door. Um, we have a career closet in Sarasota and one in um, Manatee. And they're these beautiful boutiques and we offer free clothing for either job interviews, uh, your first week of work until you get your uh, first paycheck or for any reason, uh, we don't turn anybody away. We also offered workshops. One of them is this Career Connections program. And one last thing I wanted to point out, um, starting the day that we closed our centers due to COVID, uh, we created this resources page and it's off of our website. So our website is mywrc.org. And then this is, there's a huge button on the front page of our website that says COVID resources. And this is how to find financial help, um, how to find food resources, um, educational resources for kids as well as families. And then this that I have circled here is employment resources. Um, so there's even a list on there of employees that are employers, excuse me, that are currently hiring. Um, so it's just a great resource, um, especially if you're looking for employment. Whoops. Um, so if you have questions about the Women's Resource Center, please give us a call at 941-256-9725. Or visit at us at mywrc.org. And now it is absolutely my pleasure to introduce um, Shauna Donahue from Career Edge and Justin Erickson from STC. Oh, thank you, Lori. Um, I'm going to start and then turn it over to my uh, partner in crime, Justin Erickson, over at STC. Um, just uh, real quick, uh, I'm assuming all of you right now are sitting in a building or somewhere where there's air conditioning. And it's quite possible you might have used an indoor bathroom today. And both of those things, the thing they have in common is that they involve the trades. And we are very excited to be here this afternoon to talk to you about the career opportunities in the trades. There is a significant demand here locally. Um, you know, Florida's hot. It's muggy. Um, HVAC, plumbing, you use an indoor bathroom. And the cool thing about careers in the skill in the trades are that, and you'll hear more about just from Justin, is that there's career laddering opportunities. You enter at a level and you can work your way up. You'll hear that from our two participants um, that have been part of STC and Career Edge. Um, you, you learn more, you earn more. Um, a little bit about Career Edge though. Uh, we are the workforce initiative of the Greater Sarasota Chamber of Commerce. But don't let that fool you. We serve Sarasota and Manatee counties. We've been around for about 10 years now. Um, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we are grant funded, foundation funded. We have what we call uh, targeted industries. So uh, manufacturing, healthcare, insurance, and skilled trades. Skilled trades being HVAC, plumbing, automotive. Um, we are a lean mean team of three uh, uh, at the Sarasota Chamber of Commerce. It's myself, our Executive Vice President, Maria Evie, and our newest addition, Catherine Le 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 Whalen, with, uh, she's our program coordinator. Um, about four years ago, in partnership with Suncoast Technical College, as well as Manatee Technical College, we developed something called Fast Track Training. And the cool thing about this, it's not a typical training program. Um, we work with employers. Employers say, I need X, Y, Z. I need HVAC um, install and maintenance. I need plumbing technicians. We will work with a technical college to develop a curriculum in partnership with those employers. Um, this training is at night. It's employer driven. Last week, Justin and I um, hosted an info session for an upcoming HVAC training that starts next, um, next week. And we had five different HVAC employers literally interviewing the candidates. The employers are engaged from the start. They're part of the initial part, uh, the partnership. During the training, they come to STC and provide the hands-on training um, with our participants. Uh, this training is at night, three nights a week. 
lasts eight to 10 weeks. It gives our participants the opportunity to work during the day and earn money and, and gain the skills they need at night at STC or MTC. Um, the training is tied to certifications, industry certifications. Justin will talk to you a little more about it, but between forklift, EPA, these are the certifications that help get your foot in the door in the industry. Um, our commitment from career standpoint is uh, we provide uh, mentorship. We do resume assistance, the mock interviews. We get the employers engaged as part of the process. And we fund um, the training uh, for our participants participants that are selected. Um, over the course of the past two years, 97% of our fast track participants have earned an increase in wages over the past the two years after completing the program. So that's almost 100% wage increase from the time you commit and dedicate yourself to this training to the wage increase at the end. Um, and it's either direct connect to employment. Um, Justin can talk a little bit about the apprenticeship. We have um, Katrina, who you'll hear from hopefully if she doesn't get tied up at work, in MACA, uh, HVAC apprenticeships, plumbing apprenticeships. Um, so it's, you complete the training, but at the end, there's so much more opportunities. And just, I'm really excited that you guys are taking your afternoon to learn more about um, the, uh, the career laddering opportunities that are in the skilled trades, because it's endless. Um, I just really want to thank uh, Lori and the Women's Resource uh, Center team for putting this together this afternoon. And uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to my partner in crime, Justin Erickson. Hello everybody, I'm Justin Erickson. Uh, I work with all of the industrial trade programs here at Suncoast Technical College. Uh, we have 15 different training programs that are offered uh, on the trade side uh, to machinery and maintenance, uh, to the automotive and marine industries. Um, Currently right now, uh, we cannot keep up with the demand that the local employers are putting on uh, us as a school and, and the programs. So there are more job offerings out there right now than students going through our doors, even though our doors are very full at this point. Um, many of our programs, if not all, are stacked, uh, as Shauna stated, with credentials uh, or industry certifications. And again, these are certifications that you earn as a student that they are yours for a lifetime. Nobody can take those away from you again. Uh, they often articulate into uh, the local state colleges and or university programs if you choose to go on further after that as well. So they're great uh, pieces of paper and documents for you to get a, a, a job with a great wage, a great starting wage. Uh, all of our programs that we host here at Suncoast Technical College are on the high wage, high demand list. Uh, so they, they have a great starting salary. And I think uh, to our two students that have gone through the programs, uh, again, the, the success is on you after that, on how much the effort uh, you want to put in and, and go forth uh, beyond that. Um, currently, we have some great programs and great instructors on board that are very charismatic and passionate about what they do. Uh, many of them are from industry as well. So their industry background is very strong along with their connections to the employers. Uh, we differ much uh, from a traditional college or university as uh, our job is done once you're employed. So we have to follow through and make sure that all of our students uh, gain employment in the area in which they were trained, which uh, more or less forces us to, to develop a strong community partnership uh, with organizations like CareerSource and all of our local employers who are in and out of our doors all the time, looking to recruit, looking to help train, uh, making sure that you all have an opportunity for a parallel entry, entry path uh, into employment. We want to make that uh, transition as easy as possible uh, for you to uh, begin your new opportunity after you go through training here. Uh, traditionally, our daytime programs, are, uh, our, our theme was a career in a year, and Shauna touched base uh, on the fast track training opportunities that we're offering now, which were developed around a, a local employer's need. Of they just weren't getting bodies fast enough again. Uh, so we are able to uh, reach a group or an audience that traditionally could not go through our daytime programs, maybe working elsewhere, 
but could go through uh, some evening time uh, for about 12 weeks, uh, get employed, and then get a, more or less a fast track into employment rather than going through our year-long programs. And so far, they have been a great success. Uh, and we have two of our students on here, I see, uh, that have gone through uh, our HVAC and plumbing programs. Uh, it's great to see them and, and we continue to bump into them out in the community and uh, some of them hopefully continue to be involved uh, in our programs here at STC. So thank you for having me on today. Thank you, Justin. So next up is Trudy Moon, owner of Air and Energy. Judy, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Sean and Justin, that was um, excellent for me to hear what you are all doing because um, being an owner, I'm Trudy Moon, Aaron Energy. Um, I've owned the company, gosh, it's 35 years. It's absolutely insane. But the most exciting thing that I've ever been involved in. And I listened to Justin and Shauna explaining Number one, the demand for the trades right now. And it's, it's, um, it's quite exciting to think that now we can start talking about women in the trades. And I'm not sure how it became so male dominated, but it certainly has. In my company, and I can speak for a lot of my peers, we have so many opportunities um, for women in the trades. So there's air conditioning, there's plumbing, there's electrical. We own, or we're, we have a whole generator division. We have a sales division. So when I think of women in the trades and, and how we can encourage it, I'm thinking there are so many levels. It doesn't have to be, if you don't wanna be an electrician, you may wanna run a warehouse. You may wanna manage the dispatchers. You may wanna sell which sales is an incredible, um, incredible career. Um, and you can sell any one of those, um, obviously. But you can also be a vendor rep or a product rep or, I mean, I could go on and on because I've talked to so many people that have come to be employed and the different avenues of employment. So, I would hope to see, and I, we've hired people from the schools. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, they are, um, they are incredible that they're doing so much work. But we've also, and I'm sure my peers are the same, once we get that employee, we also put them with very experienced people. So the training goes on for a long, long time. So you're not brought in and plopped in and said, okay, now you're a plumber or now you're an electrician or an HVAC girl, you are put with a partner. You are, you are hugged a lot. And then as, you know, Lori mentioned and a few others, the salaries obviously keep climbing. And that is so, done so quickly and the opportunity can be so quick. If you come in at a level and you show that you have a lot to offer and you're, you want to learn and you're, you're energized, they want, we want to put you to that next level. We want to bring you up to the next level and the next level. And, you know, we're talking about entry level, what, 14-ish? My guys, they're making in the $30 an hour. There is no reason anybody can't do that with the proper training and the proper energy to want to learn. And I guess my whole philosophy, and, and I deal with a lot of um, um, people from MTI and I've got the chamber and I'm in the community, is that I really would like to even see the teachings of this at a lower level, not just high school. I'd love to see it in middle school. I'd like. I'd like people to be more aware of what's out there at a younger age. Not everybody's cut out for college. I mean, we just aren't. So there is so much out there to learn. 
there's a lot of scholarship money. I know that um, other people here today know that. Um, Horn Moon, we've, we've done big functions that allowed us to raise a lot of money for scholarships for this reason. So I encourage people to get out there and learn where that money is. And I can only encourage anybody to get into the trades. I, I, I believe in it very, very strongly. So I thank you very much. I'm, I hang around with a lot of really cool people. And uh, my employees have been with me, some of them 35 years. So it's a long, it's a long life and you enjoy where you work and live and you have a lot of freedom out there. So I think it's a lot of fun. I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Trudy. Um, and now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our professionals, starting with Katrina Tartan from Badger Bob Services. Katrina? Hello, how are you? Hi, thanks so much for joining. No problem. Take it away. Okay. So um, my name is Katrina. I work for Badger Bob Services. And I got into the program. I was interested. I like to work with my hands. So um, I reached out. So someone sent me an email from my little girl's school about Bridges to Career. So I applied. And Career Egg, Shana, she reached out. She interviewed me. And she basically asked me why did I want to be in this profession. I told her I like, you know, I like to work with my hands. And I like challenges. I don't like anything simple. Once I learn it, I feel like it's more to learn. And doing HVAC, I believe, like, the sky's the limit. There's, like, professionals 30 years down the road still learning. So, I mean, that's what got me interested in it. Um, so I took a course, a fast-track course at STC. Uh, Mr. Gary was my teacher. I was the only girl in there. Um, talk about pressure. So um, all, the, uh, all the guys, they actually reached out, helped me. Anything that I need help with, not only did Mr. Gary do it, help me, but all the students. All the students, they helped me, and, and they treated me like I was, you know, just, uh, just learning the trade. Um, they, didn't, they didn't take it easy on me, which, I, I, you know, I prefer that. But um, it was great. It was it was great. Um, to this day, I can call Mr. Gary and say, "Hey, I need help with something," uh, and he'll reach out and tell me how to do it. Um, likewise, I um, Career Edge they helped me. Shauna helped me get a job with Badger Bob's. Um, I passed everything. Um, I, I had an interview. Interview went great. I thought it went great, um, but I still was a little nervous. Anyways, um, he gave me a call. I showed up, and through this whole process, I think I've been there about six months or so. I did my training, my internship. I did my internship first, and um, it was great because they put me with some some senior, some senior um, techs up there, uh, supervisors and, and everything. And everyone, everyone treated me well. Um, it was a great experience. Um, after that, my supervisor, he reached out to me, he said, Katrina, is there anything you need, anything you're having trouble with, just let me know. I was like, okay, cool. So about after and a couple of weeks, well, probably four more weeks of training, they gave me my own vehicle. So, you know, I was, I was happy because I felt like I was on another level. Um, as, I, as I went and ventured out on my own, I ran into problems, and the problems were all I had to do was call my supervisor and he walked me through it, you know, so um, FaceTime helped as well. But um, like I say, they're really welcome and they treat me like family and it's, it's a great experience. So about, I say about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, my supervisor called me. I was on a job and he was like, hey, would you, um, would you like to be in an apprenticeship program? I'm like, yeah, of course. Why not? So, um, yeah, so they put me back into school to uh, learn more and perfect the craft. So, I mean, like I say, the sky's the limit. Um, I was willing to learn. I was willing to advance, not only just stay stagnant, just learn this, learn that. I wanted to do more. So they, they are actually supporting me. And thanks to Career Edge and everyone else that actually, you know, took a chance on me, I appreciate it. So for all the women out there, 
Um, the sky's the limit. Just go after your dreams and whatever you do, just go hard at it. Oh my gosh, Katrina, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. I just love that. <laughs> really yeah. appreciate you joining in. You can see Katrina's in her truck, right? Running from one, one place to the other. So I really appreciate you giving your time here to share your experience with us. No problem. Awesome. Thank you. You're and welcome. I'm also so excited to introduce another one of our professionals, Elena Chavez from Plumbing Today. Alana? Elena? <laughs> hey there. <laughs> so, okay, everyone always called me Alana. <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Uh, so once again, my name is Elena Chavez. I work with Plumbing Today. Um, I started basically with Women's Resource Center at the Career Edge. Um, like their, not Career Edge, but like their career source of what they offer um, put me through, you know, finding jobs online, putting a resume, picking out an outfit, doing those skills to interview because I kind of didn't know how to. So they really helped me. And then in their room where all the computers are, they have flyers, you know, job postings and STC had a flyer for free tuition of HVAC and plumbing. And I think they even had a low a lawnmowers um, technicians, which I thought was pretty cool because, you know, who thinks of that? <laughs> and so I took the opportunity, me and my mom went up there and we applied right away and I got accepted. So not only did Career Edge uh, help fund my class, FASFA also, um, they f help fund my class as well. So I walked out debt free, which was pretty nice because I hear some of my friends who are like my age, 27, paying debt in, you know, four year universities and still no job or maybe a side job isn't full time kind of thing. Um, and that's what really hit me right there is, man, I'm going after a job that is a labor skill job that is always going to be needed no matter what, because someone's always going to want stuff flushing downhill, not coming back up and everyone's going to be wanting to drink good proper water. Um, and that's the one thing that I learned throughout this company is we're really big, Plumbing Today is really big on filtration. A lot of people are not aware of what's actually coming through the city water. Um, there's a lot of contaminants in that. So the guys, you know, they really brought that into light um, when I became a plumber and writing with senior techs and getting to know, you know, why our plumbing systems fail all the time so quickly is because you know, our water quality, it's always back to water quality. Um, and the guys never judged me, you know, they were like, hey, you can solder, you can test the backflow because I'm certified as a backflow tech and some of them aren't. So it's a little bit of a higher pay compared to just being a plumber, um, which is kind of nice. And uh, I haven't been back to school since um, just because there's so much to learn on the field with the senior techs and kind of like how Katrina was saying with the zoo, uh, the, the, the cameras and being able to call your supervisor, anything that's like, you know, picture wise really helps. So technology has come a long way for us as well. Um, and so going back towards women in the trades, I don't think anyone should feel like they're any different than a man because um, a man and a woman can drive a car. A man and a woman can scoop ice cream on an ice cream cone. So it's, it's easy. And honestly, with plumbing, it's it's everything adapting to each other. So it's honestly puzzle pieces. And I do volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club. I haven't been back, unfortunately, since the COVID-19. They aren't allowing volunteers. So once that's lifted, I will be back and returning. I've done that for about two years now. Um, I teach them from grades, I want to say fourth grade all the way up to 11th grade of plumbing, you know. Um, and that's one thing like uh, uh, Trudy was saying, uh, bringing it to younger kids because younger kids have a more of a thought process with their hands and I've seen that because I have 11 nieces and nephews okay so hands-on is a big ordeal and if we can get it to the younger the uh, stages of, of life of kids and stuff before high school I think that would be really beneficial because for me personally high school was boring there isn't enough electives anymore it's all about book and homework um, I mean photography was just starting out and then taken away so it just goes to show that you know high school isn't really into the hands-on things they're all like about four-year college, AT scores, so you can get into a college, and honestly, it, it, it should be more about, hey, there's post-secondary schools, there's trade schools, there's, you know, university, there's community college, there's other options out there, um, and to not think of yourself any any less of a, a, of a guy, because, I mean, I was there when I was, you know, like, Katrina, the only woman in the class, 
it is a little bit of a pressure to have 13 guys and then you're scoring a high score above them and then they're kind of like a jealous and you kind of have to uplift them like, hey man, we both all passed. You just got a lower score. At least we both got a job. And that's what I love about Career Edge because um, they have the funders like Jamie, my owner, who funded um, to help pay for the class and stuff. Um, you know, it goes a long way because now I'm not only going, I went through the class, but now I got a job through a funder that supported that class. So it definitely goes a long way. It's a big circle, like a big community circle. And without all you, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I, that's why I say and give back of so much of, you know, homeless people and the Boys and Girls Club and helping out, you know, single moms who are trying to figure out what they want to do in life, just speaking so truly about it because it's life changing. And it's, it's definitely been a opening door for me and pay, like uh, Trudy was saying, is definitely amazing. I mean, money does make you happy. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you again for having me to be able to share my story and my success story. And like uh, Katrina said, the sky's the limit. I hope one day I have my own personal business and it's going to be hopefully named Mrs. Chavez's Plumbing. <laughs> And I have no doubt you will. <laughs> Thank you so much for your sharing your journey. I really appreciate the two of you. You have really, you've made my day. Oh God, warm my heart. Um, thanks so much. I know you're busy and I, I really appreciate you taking the time um, to share your journey and, and your thoughts um, and your success stories with us today. So last but not least, I have Lee Kotwicki from the State College of Florida. And I ditto what you say, Lori. Uh, <laughs> Katrina and Elena, congratulations on your positions and it was great hearing your stories. Amazing, really great. And I'm very excited to um, let you know this afternoon about two free training courses that are being offered through Career Source Suncoast, which is your local workforce board and State College of Florida. These courses would result in a certification that is endorsed through the Manufacturing Skills Standards Council, also known as MSSC, which is widely recognized in the manufacturing industry. So let me tell you about the first one, CPT. Certified Production Technician, and it would qualify you for entry-level jobs in the production or assembly line um, category at a manufacturing company. This course is 80 to 100 hours online, so if you could dedicate 20 hours a week, you work at it at your own pace, you could be uh, finished with it and earn that certification in just over a month. The CPT is divided into four sections, safety, process and production, maintenance awareness, and quality. After you complete each section, you would come to our Lakewood Ranch campus, which is located just two miles east of I-75 off University Parkway to take an assessment. The assessment you have up to an hour and a half to complete once you have successfully completed all four assessments, then you earn that certification. The next one I want to talk to you about is CLT, Certified Logistics Technician, also offered online. It's 75 hours approximately to complete, and it only has two assessments. So there are many opportunities in Manatee and Sarasota counties for someone with these certifications to get hired. Some of the potential employers are Air Products, King Products, New England Machinery, PGT, Sun Hydraulics, Tervis, Weber Manufacturing, just to name a few. The starting wage is about 13 to 14 per hour. Uh, PGT right now is offering $13 an hour to start and a $1,000 sign-on bonus. Now, they don't require one of these certifications, but of those companies that I mentioned, many of them would take a candidate um, over someone who didn't have the certification. So there is an advantage. In order to qualify for these certification programs, 
you must live in Manatee County outside of the Bradenton city limits, have been affected by COVID such as laid off and have low to moderate income. If you live in Sarasota County, you could be eligible if you qualify as an Alice household. And if you're not sure if you qualify, then just please reach out to the Women's Resource Center. They're always happy to help. And if you have any questions on either one of these programs, again, my name is Lee Cutwicky, and you can reach me at 363-7218. And I look forward to hearing from you. Awesome, Lee, thanks so much. You're welcome. So we have a couple of questions that have come in. The first one is for um, Justin and Shauna. Um, and the question is, can STC or Career Edge explain the free funded training programs um, available now or coming up soon? Sure. Um, from the Career Edge standpoint, um, we are getting ready to launch an HVAC training next week. So that has closed out. We're working with Justin. I'll let him talk a little bit about some of the upcoming trainings. But you can always go to our website, thecouragefunders.org. Check out our social media. We issue press releases. We send the information out to our community partners once we have the dates and times scheduled. Um, uh, Justin, I don't know if you want to piggyback on any of the kind of the additional trainings. So as Shauna said, we have the HVAC uh, program coming around again, uh, coming up here at the end of September. I'm sorry, my camera just went out. Yeah, I think your your audio went out too, Justin. Um, yeah, sounds like a chipmunk. I know, Shauna. Do you know if um? <laughs> STC would have, have yeah. information on, on their website. Yeah, Justin, are you back or you want me I to cover? So. You said I sounded like a chipmunk. I don't want to sound like I a did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've lost my camera, but that's okay. So we have our automotive program coming up. Uh, we also have a daytime automotive program as well, but our automotive fast track training course, which uh, similar, it's not tied to an apprenticeship program, uh, but we have seen the dealerships now send the first cohort uh, of technicians, they're honoring and sending them back to a second and third level of training uh, and recognizing the value of these fast track programs and the training that's provided here at STC. Uh, so much, many of the large dealership brands in the area such as Sunset Automotive and Ghetto Automotive uh, and Wildy, the Wildy group are all hiring sometimes even pre-hiring students that are in this program because they know the training that's coming out of it. Uh, and again, in that high wage, high demand category of starting at $13, $14 an hour. And then we've heard of technicians that are, you know, 15, 20 years in the field, uh, almost making $100,000 now. So it's, it's not an unreachable goal. Uh, and then we have our Marine Service Program coming up. Uh, in the, the later spring as well, we'll be offering a, a marine service fast track program. Uh, we've been talked about plumbing again. Uh, we just, again, as the demand comes from the employer, we're trying to get uh, bodies out uh, to the workforce uh, as quickly and as well trained as we can. We don't want to rush them too fast, but because we still want to produce a quality product and people that are going to be successful in the field. And Again, that's where those industry certifications uh, in which you leave our programs with, uh, even that Lee was touching on, uh, those are the stack credentials that kind of go in front of your resume. Uh, that, that's lifelong learning there that, that won't disappear from you. And Justin, um, when are the, co the courses offered? Are they all in the evenings or does it vary? Correct, so the fast track programs uh, are offered in the evenings. Again, those are geared towards a working individual that is really just struggling, struggling to get out of that low wage category uh, and really needs that, that quick boost uh, out. So that we do offer that in the evening uh, from about 5.30, some programs are till eight and some are till nine uh, and some are two or three days a week. And they last up, they can last up to 10 weeks. So like for instance, this HVAC training that we're launching next week, 
is every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night from 5.30 to 9. And someone actually is asking about the HVAC. Are there currently openings in that course, the HVAC course? That, the one that starts next week, it is, it's uh, closed out. But I think we're looking to start one just in down, uh, Northport. We're targeting a January start date. That is correct. Our January campus down in Nor our, our January start date down at our campus in Northport. Uh, so really looking to meet the need down in that Northport community is really growing. Uh, so we have our Northport campus that's right off of exit 179 off I-75 and we'll be offering a, a second training down there. Again, the demand is growing. So we've got to grow that program. Good, great. And this is a really good question. I'll, I'll open this up to everyone. Um, how do we as advocates of the trades, business owners, et cetera, work closely with guidance counselors and parents in the community to help them recognize when skills trades might be the best fit versus traditional post-secondary schooling? I could, Lori, if I could start off with that, uh, I think sure. that's, you know, more or less coming from the young people over to the parents these days. Uh, we dual enroll right around 700 high school students on our campus that they choose to come over here for half their day. Uh, and that's really where they're getting that earlier exposure um, as juniors and seniors, and then coming around and committing to finishing out those programs uh, and then some going off to college after that and some of uh, many staying here in the local workforce to stay and work because they understand those wages. What we're finding is that that information is trailing off to those parents at home uh, of the success of the programs that are in the area here, whether it be MTC or STC. Um, there's, you know, there's so many more opportunities out there for training bodies uh, that it, it doesn't even put the schools competitive against each other. Uh, we're just trying to get the word out of the, the high wage, high demand opportunities that are in the Sarasota Manatee area. Uh, so we're beginning to see even the parents come back around saying, well, my son or daughter has been enrolled in this course. I would like to come to STC to take this course. Or we just hear that that common family trend uh, is becoming all, all too familiar. Yeah. Does anybody else have comments? I also love Elena where she graduated with no debt, right? We love that. <laughs> That's a real benefit. The only comment I would make is that, and I agree with Justin, um, is to get out there and speak it up. I mean, talk to everybody about the opportunity. Talk to your friends, talk to your schools. Um, with the chamber, I end up going out and doing a lot of speaking at even the, the, the middle schools because I think, you know, and I, I know Elena agreed and, and I'm sure Katrina, the younger we get there and start talking about the opportunities that are out there for everybody, I, I, for some reason we dropped the ball on that. I truly believe we did. Um, historically that we, we just didn't introduce all the opportunities they're out making a good living and being a good community person. And I, I think we just went a, a course of saying, get your high school, do all this and go to college. Right. Good luck. <laughs> you know, even though a lot of these kids go and after the first year or two, they're, they're, they don't know what they want. And so if we can teach them and open up their eyes a little bit more, and, and the question was good. How do you get to those is very, very difficult. And I know SCF does a good job talking to a lot of the incoming kids in their programs. And I think we just have to start talking about it in general out there. Every single body should start talking about opportunities for their children. So my comment. Um, thank you, Trudy. Um, next question is, how do I apply for the HVAC in January? And will there be another one in Sarasota? So, um, 
again, you can keep an eye on our website. Um, we'll update when we have the training dates and times finalized, uh, social media, but uh, we will actually have an application on the careeredgefunders.org website that you can apply to. But we'll get the flyers out. We'll share it with the Women's Resource Center like we did this, this last one, the one that starts next week. We'll get, we'll get the word out. Just keep an eye out. Please refer to our website, social media, um, but the application's online. Good. And I think that might be, I don't know. Um, um, so there is funding available, right? That's one of the questions. Is there funding available? Which is yes, right? For all these classes are funded. Yes. And then um, what about people who have compromised backgrounds? Um, are employees willing to hire, employers willing to hire? So I can't see Justin. I just see. So for our HVAC training, uh, the HVAC industry, it can be difficult because we're going into individuals' homes and they are very particular about backgrounds. I mean, Trudy, you can chime in here too. You, I mean, you're the subject matter expert. Uh, yeah, actually, um, uh, Shawnee, you're absolutely right. Um, we're going into individual homes. What we have done is we take a look individually at the person, and then we do check the, what it was, how long ago, um, and what they've done in between. And so we, we really do research it. It's not just a absolutely not. Um, so we, we do do research, but I agree with Shauna. When you're going into people's homes, it's extremely difficult um, when the background is compromised. Okay. More I difficult. Say something in there. Um, oh, in yeah, sure. In today. So um, it took me a good year to get my own vehicle. There was about three drug tests I had to pass. And then, of course, proving that I can drive the truck without, you know, hard braking and speeding and, you know, because they have a tracker on that. So, you know, there's a lot of process in that. And of course, our checks, I think we do a check too. So um, they go for like sex pedophiles. Um, I think a couple felonies that uh, they don't hire on. So our company is really big on making sure that your background and driving history. And of course, you know, the not doing drugs is an important one because you don't want a pedophile on, you know, doing drugs in someone's house. So I definitely think it's a big thing and a, and a proper thing to do when working for a good company. And Lori, I can speak to that too. I know that uh, Career Source Suncoast, they do work with uh, second chance employers. I believe that PGT is one of those employers. So they could always go through Career Source Suncoast. Great. Great. Thanks for that. And Shauna, there's a question How do I know if I'm going to be able to get funding for these courses? So when we don't promote a course it's uh, unless we have funding for it so there is a screening process not everyone that applies will necessarily be part of it so it's a phone interview and then at the what we call the information session individuals are actually interviewed by the employer so for instance let's just go with the example of the our hvac info session last wednesday night we had five different hvac employers interviewing the participants that had applied made it past the initial phone screen um, and those employers hand selected the participants that would be in the training so it's everything is very clear up front with the flyer with regard to the background requirements if there's background requirements on the phone screen we we go through the process um, every step of the way there's transparency and communication so it's an application they go through an application process yep and then for the full daytime programs, uh, similar to SCF and, and MTC as well, there's multiple avenues of funding uh, for those daytime programs that if, if somebody can attend those, such as filling out your FAFSA application, there's opportunities for funding at Career Source. So really it just takes a step and, and some time uh, to step in or make an appointment with the admissions counselors uh, at any one of these schools uh, and help let them help you begin that process. There are so many avenues of funding out there that are not being taken advantage of uh, that somebody just off the street wouldn't even know about. So don't let those opportunities or don't let that intimidate you of not coming 
uh, and starting an application at any one of these campuses because there is plenty of funding out there uh, that it's worth looking into. Great, thanks for that. And can I apply in advance for the CPT, for the HVAC course? And I guess that's as soon as the application opens, right, Jonah? Okay. And then also uh, we have our HVAC course is also starting on March 3rd for the daytime program uh, at here at the main campus. And that one you can apply in advance for uh, and start the application for funding and scholarships now as well if, if somebody can take that as an opportunity too. Okay. So um, following this webinar, we will send out a, we always send out a follow-up email with a link to the recording, the contact information for everybody who's presenting today. Um, and some of, some of the folks have flyers that will attach to that email. Um, so you'll be able to follow up uh, with any one of us. Uh, to get more information. I don't see any more questions at this time, but um, please feel free to reach out to us if you do have questions. It's a wonderful opportunity here, um, and I hope you can take advantage of it. So I want to thank so much every one of the panelists we had today. Um, there was a lot of them and a lot of effort uh, put in for all of you, I know everybody's busy, so thank you very, very much on behalf of the Women's Resource Center um, and all of our participants today. And then everyone, these webinars live on on YouTube, so you, you never know the reach that uh, you will have. Um, one last ask for the participants. When we end the webinar, a survey is going to pop up. I would really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind spending, it's just a few questions, just to give us feedback on the webinar. Um, it's very important in how we craft all of our future programs. So thanks for joining, thanks for presenting, um, and I hope everybody has a great day. Take care. Thanks.